Hi. Recently, I've been talking about weight several times in the last couple of weeks on my social media sites and on my blog. And the question I have is why is the topic of weight such a taboo topic in our nation? There's a picture that's going around from the 1950s or 60s at the beach and it's packed full of people, but no one was overweight at all. They're all thin or slender, in good shape. They didn't look skinny, but healthy, healthy, thin. Healthy weight. <laughs> I know that's offensive too, to say skinny. And I don't mean skinny. I think skinny cannot be very attractive. And there's a lot of women struggling with anorexia and bulimia these days. And because they do want to be thin, they do think it looks better, but then they destroy their health over it and their teeth and they're obsessed with it and that's wrong too. But I don't think weight should be a taboo to topic in our culture. Our culture has skyrocketed with obese people. What is it, over 25% of people are considered obese today. They're the ones that are mostly dying of COVID. They have heart disease, cancer, diabetes more. It's very unhealthy lifestyle, plus they're miserable. And I know that a lot of you who are obese hate it. You hate being obese. You know it's uncomfortable. You know it's wrong. And you know gluttony is wrong. But and it's tough, but our culture has made it really easy to be obese and to overeat. Our food's plentiful. It's junky. It's all about taste and not nutrition. It's full of seed oils. The canola, the safflower, the sunflower, the rice bran, the soybean oil, all those are horrible for your health, destroy your health. And they contribute to obesity, sugars and everything, which contributes to obesity, junk food, processed food, all of that contributes to obesity, overeating, because your body's not satisfied. We need healthy fats and food to satisfy our, and proteins to satisfy our hunger. So, and I, I was having a discussion with a woman on Instagram about this topic, and she was saying that obesity used to be beautiful. Look at Marilyn, Mon Marilyn Monroe, she wore a size 12. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe was not obese, she wasn't even overweight. And a size 12, I don't know what size she was, but sizes are different now. I used to, I'm about the same size as I have been since I was married, but I wear a much smaller size than when I was married because sizes have changed to fit to not offend women as they grow larger. And this isn't the answer. And if you talk to women about weight, they say you're fat, fat shaming them. But women, it needs to be talked about. We need to start eating healthier, exercising more, being busy around the home, working hard, doing what you can, having self-control and discipline. God tells us that we're supposed to be temperate and moderate in everything, including our eating, our spending, our spending time watching TV and all our cell phones. We're supposed to be known for that. And yes, it's offensive to many women, but truth will always be offensive to women because it convicts them and challenges them. There's nothing in my life that I mind being challenged about, you know, con challenging, convicted. I like to read people who write bold truths, hard truths like Debbie Pearl and Michael Pearl and John MacArthur and some men I follow on Facebook like Joseph Spurgeon and Uncaged the Lion on Instagram and Masculine Revival. They teach bold, hard truths. And Doug Wilson, I've been listening to him a lot lately and I just love his teaching. He convicts and challenges me every day when I read his things. But God's word is, is offensive. People will tell me that I'm offensive. I don't show grace. <laughs> but look at Titus 3 and 4. Older women are to teach women, young women to what? Love and obey their husbands, be keepers at home, be chaste, be discreet. Why? So they don't blaspheme the word of God. That's quite offensive. God's word is offensive. I don't want to blaspheme. It's not offensive to me, though. I don't want to offense, um, offend, um, blaspheme God's word. So I, I do, all my, do my very best to obey God's word with his spirit working mightily within me. What about the verse in 1 Peter 3, 1, 6 about Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, 
and ye are your daughters if ye do likewise. That's horribly offensive to women, but I, it's not to me because I love God's word. And one woman told me that whenever I teach women to be sexually pure until marriage, it offends all those women who are not. And I need to make qualifiers about how they're forgiven, da, da, da. And they are forgiven. Women who have tattoos, um, you know, I'm not saying that's a sin, but it, it, it could be. It's very toxic to your body. It's, um, it's, it's not being discreet. It's not being shamefaced. It's drawing attention to yourself. So it can be sin, but women who have a lot of tattoos and they read what I say and they are convicted, that's good. It's better to be convicted and say, you know what, she's right, I wish I didn't get my tattoos instead of being offended and trying to justify their tattoos or not or fornicating before marriage and not being sexually pure instead of being offended. Some women will tell me, I wish I was taught what you teach when I was young. You know, you're right. I wish it's caused so much pain and heartache in my life. So we need to be challenged and convicted on every area of our lives, including our weight. If, you know, I have my husband hold me accountable. <laughs> I like, he holds me account. He wants me to hold him accountable. If he, you know, we're allowed to say something to each other. If we think that the, my husband's never, he's told me when I, he thought I was getting too thin because I, during times of illness, I get thin but that's something I can't help either. I try to eat enough to keep my weight on, but now I have no problem, because, <laughs> but we do try, hold each other accountable. He holds me, you know, he'll say something where he doesn't think I'm being submissive or arguing too much or something. He holds me accountable and that's okay. He's head over me. We can't be offended when our husbands hold us accountable. I don't like it. You know, it's never, you know, great to be rebuked <laughs> or exhorted. But it's good for us. It can. It's good. We need to be because we'll never be perfect. We need our husbands. And I have some really close, good friends that have challenged me and exhorted me that I listen to. And I, you know, and I still think of the words they said to me. I think, yeah, no, they were right. <laughs> so it's okay to be exhorted, rebuked in every area of our life. We want to be more and more like Christ. We want to be a good witness to the world. When you see a really heavy, obese pastor preaching you know what his sin is in his life and it's just it doesn't make him, him look good because he doesn't have that through the spirit self-control which a lot of us don't have it perfectly I'm not judging obese pastors because there are some fantastic ones out there and we all have struggles think sins that we struggle with but it's just not a good witness because people see our exterior they don't see our heart and our characteristics and our attitudes like they do our our body. But we should do what we can to please our husbands. And most husbands do like their wives to be in shape. They're very visual. Like this one man wrote that instead of spending 30 minutes getting your nails done, spend 30 min minutes taking a long walk or being at the gym. Cause this is, that would probably please your husband more than having fake fingernails. So anyway, you know, take things as a grain of salt. Don't get offended. Don't get easily offended at truth or things that are convicting you. Women have confused conviction with um, being offended and it's really been harmful for them. Instead of being allowing God's word to convict and change them, they just offend. It's offensive and they walk away, which is just harms them more. So anyway, I'll continue to teach truth as I see it. I'm not cruel. Um, people say I'm harsh, but God's word is harsh. Blaspheme the word if you don't obey your husband, women. <laughs> you know, you're not Sarah's daughter if you don't obey him and call your husband Lord. <laughs> so God's word is harsh. If you think that I'm harsh, his word's harsh, but it's good. His word, God's word never comes back void. Don't be so easily offended. You won't be able to take criticism and the stuff that I take on a daily basis if you are easily offended. You have to know that who you are in Christ and be secure in who you are in Christ and take truth and love truth and obey truth. Love God. <laughs> love his word. Bye-bye. <laughs>